Waves transfer energy from one place to another. Right now you're listening to my voice. My voice, the energy is coming from the speaker uh, in your headphones or uh, in your computer. That energy is transferring from the computer through sound waves to your ear. And all sound waves, or all waves in general, they all involve some kind of oscillation. Something is vibrating. Whether it's uh, a water wave, the water would be vibrating, or sound, air is vibrating, or even light itself, the, there's electromagnetic waves that are vibrating. Now there's lots of different uh, types of wave experiment. Uh, for example, water waves, uh, ripples on a pond. Uh, if you've ever played with a slinky as a child, you can make those uh, oscillate. Light itself is a wave, part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And even if you've got maybe a rope, uh, you tie it to a tree and you vibrate it up and down, you'll see waves occurring all the way along the rope. Now we need to learn a few terms uh, to do with waves for the course. And now the first one is the wave front. Now the wave front is a line where all the waves are in phase. And if you look at this photograph of a uh, water wave coming through a harbour wall, through the gap in the harbour wall, you can see there's a line where the wave is all doing the same thing. It's all at a peak. That line there, and also behind it there, that line there would represent the wave front. So it's a line where all the waves are doing the same thing. They're all in phase. Wave speed is the measurement of how fast a wave moves forward. It's measured in meters per second. And here you can see a, a jet uh, and it's actually going faster than the speed of sound. And around it, the sound waves are trying to catch up with the jet and it forms this pressure wave called a sonic boom. Frequency is the number of wave cycles per second and it's measured in hertz. And normally human beings can hear from a range of 20 to 20,000 hertz. Wavelength is the distance it takes for the wave to repeat itself. Basically the length of one wave. Wavelength is measured in meters. And here in our diagram you can see two waves. We've got this blue wave here. Okay. Uh, its wavelength, you can say from one peak to another, that distance there is one wavelength, or from uh, where the wave is starting, this distance here would be one wavelength. Note this unusual symbol here, lambda. Lambda is the symbol for wavelength. The red light, uh, the red wave here, well, it's got a much smaller wavelength, if you can see from there to there, from peak to peak, or from trough to trough, or from where the wave starts to where it uh, ends. Here you can see it's much smaller than the, the wave that's in blue. Amplitude. The distance from the peak of the wave to the rest position is what we call the wave's amplitude. And the amplitude is measured in meters. So here, if, if there was no wave, the medium would be nice and still. And the medium, maybe if it was water, uh, would rest at this position here. So when the wave is moving through the medium, the amplitude is from this rest position to the peak or from the rest position to the trough. The both, if you look, the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here. So that's the wave's amplitude. Now one thing you have to learn is the wave equation. And the wave equation states that the wave speed is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So the wave speed is in meters per second. Frequency is in hertz uh, or per second. And then the wavelength is in meters. The triangle here uh, that I've just drawn in the left hand corner. Well, if you want to work out the frequency, sorry, if you want to work out wave speed, it's frequency times by wavelength. If you want to work out the frequency, it's wave speed divided by wavelength. And finally, if you want to work out the wavelength, it's the wave speed divided by the frequency. Now, reflection uh, is a property of waves. And reflection occurs when a wave meets a boundary. So here's our uh, chap stuck on the, this nice little desert island here. When he shouts for help, the sound wave moves forwards. It hits the boundary, which in this case is a cliff, and it'll be reflected back. 
So here he's shouting, the sound wave moves forwards and it echoes back. And this is called, you know, an, an echo. This effect is called an echo. Refraction. When waves travel from one material to another, the wave speed can change. It can either go faster or slower. And this causes an effect called refraction. Uh, what happens is, for example here, uh, when light travels into a, a glass or plastic uh, block, the wave will actually slow down. And what happens is that as it slows down, the wave will bend towards the normal. Uh, when it enters, when it, sorry, when it leaves the glass, it then continues in the original direction. So it's going through here, slowing down, and the slowing down causes the wave to slow, uh, causes the wave to bend. Here, if you look, I've got an example of uh, maybe water waves going from some an area that's deeper to an area that's shallower. As they come through, you can see that what happens is the wave slows down. So it's coming in here. The wave slows down, and because the wave slows down, this causes the wave to bend towards the normal line. Our final property of waves is something called diffraction. Now when a wave encounters a slit, the wave will spread out and this effect is called diffraction. Here you can see a wave traveling through uh, and it encounters a boundary, well the boundary is here and here, and there's a gap in the boundary and as it passes through it will spread out uh, around, the, around the, the wall here. Now what's interesting about diffraction is the smaller the gap, the bigger the spreading that occurs. And you, you might think it would be the other way around, but it's quite unusual, but the, the smaller the gap, the more spreading you get. Uh, it doesn't mean there's more energy going through. In fact, the energy that will, from the wave will actually be less, but there's more spreading that occurs with this smaller gap. If you also, what, what will make the wave spread more is the lower the frequency or the longer the wavelength of light, the more spreading that will occur. So the, the, the longer the wavelength, the more spreading, the shorter the wavelength, the less spreading. Now the diffraction explains why you can hear someone, maybe if you've got, if you imagine the, you've got a person stood here uh, and then this is maybe a doorway here, you can actually hear someone because as the wave enters through, that wave will spread out and diffract around.